PTC Creometric, Creoparametric 3.0, Lesson 20, Part 2. We've put the assembly together, and what we want to do now is we want to create a part in the design mode, in other words, top-down design. We're going to create the part with the assembly on the same screen instead of a separate part. And I'm going to make sure my tree filters are all put in here. We definitely need the features. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a key. Now, obviously, this isn't something you'd normally do. But we're going to do it to practice top-down design. So instead of clicking on Assemble, we're going to click on Create and type in Key. OK. And we're going to locate it by default datums, coordinate system to coordinate system. OK. And you can select the coordinate system of the assembly. Now, everything will become grayed out because they are in active parts right now. You're in the new part creation. In fact, the commands that you see up here in the model tab are the same ones you would see if you were doing a separate part. So we're going to start off by clicking on extrude. And our placement is going to be along the assembly right datum. But what we want to do here is take a look at what datum planes are in the part. So if we selected DTM3 to model on, let's see if that's the correct one. No, it's not. See how it went down here? We want the datum plane in this direction here. So do that slowly. Sketch setup. And we're going to click in here and delete that one. And we want the one that goes down the middle of the of the new part. See the one that's in brown here? So we want this particular datum plane, which is DTM1. Goes down the middle of the shaft, but also the middle of the key seat. And it doesn't make any difference which way we want to look at it. We could look at it the other way. Sketch. And let's put it into 2D and see what happens. This is okay. It doesn't make any difference which way you turn it. I think I'll turn it a little bit different than this. Just making this the vertical reference. Well, I still don't like it that much because I'm kind of... In fact, I think what I'm going to do is just undo that and leave it like it is. There is my key seat here. So this should actually work out okay as a view, making it somewhat easy to see. Now, what we want to first of all do is go into our hidden line. And now we can see the arc of the key seat in the shaft. And we can see the key seat in the arm here. So references. And let's pick on this curve as our reference. And also on this key seat surface in the arm. So we have this confined here. You can solve it. Close. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into our arc center ends. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this arc and go up to a point where it shows the constraint across here being equal, right mouse button line, click on here, up and down, it'll mouse button a couple of times, and we shade, it's shaded, we do need a different dimension, so right mouse button dimension, and we're going to go from one line to the other on the key and middle mouse button on the top and you can make this it says right now this is uh 0.5 we can make it like uh how about just 0.5 the distance across there okay take a look at it 
So what we want to be able to do is see where we're going to project to. So right mouse button, <clears throat> let's click OK. And we're going to go up to one side of the key seat. So we're going to go all the way up to there. So we're going to be selecting a surface. And we're going to pick this surface here. And we want to go in the other direction the same way, like so. And I think I'll turn this back into shaded. You can see the new component here. It's completely confined. There's no dimensions except for the distance from one end to, in other words, the length here. Everything else is confined by external references. Check. Like so. Let's take a look at that. So. Click on the assembly, right mouse button, activate, and you'll see that you've got that component in there. Now, at any time, we could take the component and we could open it and we could change the color. And if we wanted to, we could round it. So model and <clears throat> Let's go auto round. And that's 0 .007, 0 0.001. Check. And it's rounded. Close that. Control D. And we have our component in there. Now, one of the things we want to do is find out about a little bit more about this this assembly because when we made this part we said we we're going to use 0.5 from there to there but what I want to do is I want to take a look and see if there's any interferences or what's going on with the, the all the components as they relate to each other so I'm going to go into analysis we're going to go global interference and we're going to check preview so we got some slight intersections at the bottom here, here, the counterbore, and here in the housing. You don't have any intersections here up at the top. So we've got a few. Here's another one. When you turn the valve completely closed, it does clank against the housing. So that's OK. And the arm, it looks like that one also is a little bit off. So what we want to do is find out why we've got these problems. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our shaft because that's the key to everything. Or maybe what we should do first is just measure. So we'll measure the diameter and measure the diameter of here. Uh oh, 0.6. OK, so it's supposed to be a metric again. We use the default, which was inches. So the very first thing we want to do is we want to go change <clears throat> our units. So model properties and we want to click on units and we're going to change the units to millimeters set and we will use interpret okay close close <coughs> excuse me so we now have a metric model but we still have some problems with our parts and how they're interfering. So I'm going to open up the shaft and let's inspect this one a little bit. So if I double click on it, oh, okay. So here's a person that thought there was such a thing as a radius for a, for a shaft, which doesn't exist in history. They never call anything out with a radius ever. There isn't a dimension for here or for here. So we've got a major problem here just with the dimension. So let's edit the definition of this, edit the internal sketch, and fix it. So first of all, let's dimension. I'm going to pick the center line, 
and I'm going to pick the line here and click. Okay, so that just gave me a radius dimension. So again, do it again. We're still in dimension. So I'm going to click on the center line, the line, and the center line, middle mouse button. Still didn't give it to me. So I think what happened here is we've got to go in, we've got to tell the system. I'm going to undo a couple of things here. We've got to tell the system axis of revolution, okay? Or we have to put an axis of revolution in there. So if I select here, right mouse button, and I designate it as axis of revolution, okay? Now, if I select my dimension, center line, line, center line, middle mouse button. So get rid of the extra half dimension, the radius. And we'll continue to do that. Center line, line, center line, middle mouse button. And we do have one more. We need all three dimensions. So there's our dimensions now. They're fairly concise. I don't like this stacking of dimensions here for establishing all of these flanges areas so we'll just leave it though all right normally that would be considered bad practice you should come from one end of another or the other end stack don't stack your dimensions this builds up tolerances so and check here like so close now let's go back over to our analysis and measure and let's measure the diameter measure the diameter here that's 16. This is 14, so you got a problem there. And let's go inside here. This is 25.5. And this is 25. So we got some problems, obviously. So let's start off by <clears throat> activating the shaft and we'll make the changes there. So I'm going to double click and we have 9.5 on the top. That one's probably okay. We have 16. I think I said this one's supposed to be 14 and this one's supposed to be 25. All right. And regenerate. And let's activate the valve again and run another analysis. So the only thing I'm getting now is a interference between the valve itself and the housing. And that's something that I want, so don't worry about that. So in this case here, you had to investigate, you had to change the units again, you had to put some components together, but the main thing was the top-down design. This particular key, again, normally would be purchased and you just insert it in there with an assembly command. This concludes lesson 20.